Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today is such an exciting day. It's day two of the 13 days of Halloween, also known as Sherperween, where we meet 13 times to paint a kind of fall y'all Halloween style painting. Today is a cute little fluffy bat cat creature that we created. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. So as I break down the step-by-step -step acrylic lesson, he's going to make sure that your comments in the live stream, you know, that he's going to be watching those. He's going to be pointing cameras at what I'm doing, dealing with technical challenges of the live stream and all that fun stuff. And on occasion talking to you guys. Uh, uh, today, we're going to be working on an eight by eight surface again. I have the colors out, Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre. You could use Yellow Oxide. Start over, start over, start over, start over. I had you big. I was, now you're little. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I was, I was, I was not on the, on the button there. So See? Live. Yeah, there you go. Live. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want them to miss anything. Hi, Barbara Wilkes and Rachel Browning. Uh, Rachel made it to Alive and is super excited. All right. So 8 by 8 surface, right? Mm -hmm. And then Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Titanium White. Now on my surface, you'll see a little bit of whiting. That's a wisher intention. I'm putting out there and obviously a lot of wishes are going out for Florida, but I realized, you know, we just had our friends in Puerto Rico and there was a big flood in Afghanistan and all over the world, people are being like impacted by big climate. So I actually said safety for everyone in the path of extreme weather, because I think that's something that is an all of us challenge now. Hmm. And so I just want all of you guys, wherever you are to be safe, because weather is being extreme and that is... <sighs> A little bit scary. It's extreme. So waves and hoping everyone is okay and your power is on and you can watch the show. And if you see this later, just know that we were wishing you were all right. Are you ready to do step one, John? Oh, uh, ready? <gasps> Denise yeah. Ricard sent us a dancing pear sticker. Uh, uh, this is number one fan. Thank you very much. I really okay. appreciate that, Denise. Step that does help us up. put together these big programs. Hmm? I got a step one up. Step it one. Step one. Step one. I can't see it, so you I can know. tell me. I told you, step one. <laughs> oh, is that you telling me step That's me one? That's telling you. We got to work one. on that communication. I did not even know what you were going for there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see Cynthia Lucasin is saying hi to everybody. Now, I'm using a number 30 Simply Simmons extra large brush in a firm filament. Do you have to use this brush to do the next step? No. You can use any brush you have. I'm going to paint the whole background a single color, so it doesn't really matter what brush you use. I'm just using a big one to make my job er easier. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna together, and I'm going to just paint the whole background this brown gray. I don't even got to be neat about it, guys. No? Mm-mm. Not even got to be neat at all. This is just a ground. You don't always have to do this. It's not always needed. It is just a nice way to set up your acrylic painting. Uh, over the years of painting with beginners online, I have found that sometimes doing a ground even helps you guys deal with tricky canvases that are somehow refusing to take paint. Because hmm. once you get the ground on, all the other paint will stick just fine. Today's ground is using a lot of paint. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. We don't need it to be particularly thick. It can be streaky. We just need the gray color there. That's how we're going to get our spooky, spooky effect. Yeah. Spooky, spooky. I am really excited about the bat. Everybody was like really pulling for the witches and the cat. But honestly, for me, the bat, because I've done so many little soot bats mm -hmm. over the years for the 13 days that it just feels a little bit like Kevin or Judgy Rooster. It's kind of old school stuff that we used to do. Uh Oh, Crystal Blake is in Grand Junction, Colorado. You know, my grandmother lived in Grand Junction for a long time. We had a we had a ranch in the area that he connected. It used to take the sheep from, not that this is important, but from Wyoming to Colorado. And Grand Junction was the where the stead was. Hmm. Uh, they had it until I was, I don't know, like five or six. We let, like, let it go when I was really little, I believe. Because, you know, not ranching anymore. That makes sense. Sheepless, though, was not a point. All right. For the next step, we're yeah. going to need to dry this. Now, you could let it air dry. You could hair dry it. You can pause any time during this video, and the live chat will continue if you're here for the lives. Don't feel like you have to paint at my speed. You just, you just make this a relaxing, fun time. 
Yeah. So thoroughly dry. Don't use heat. Avoid those things. Uh, heat is, can cause your your uh, paint to become a little soft and sticky. So it's better to just not use that low on the low heat setting. Thoroughly dry, you'll notice there'll be a little sheen texture. Not texture, but a sheen change where you'll see it go from kind of a little bit glossy to a little duller. And that'll, uh, that'll indicate that you've got that th thoroughly dry. And... Ooh, I gotta say thank you to Rosie. Also, Rosie Duell got a fun little dancing goal pair in. Thank goal. you. All right. We are stepped. We are stepped. I see that uh, Lori Cavanaugh is in the house talking about uh, the not fun of moving, and Charlotte is saying hi. Lori, I have to agree. It's been very destructive in our lives. <laughs> For real. Now, to make things easy on myself, I need to know what I'm worried about painting and what I'm not worried about painting and also um, kind of placement. I'll be putting it in once or twice. You could use the traceable right now at this stage and it would help you. You just might use put it back in again later if you want to. But right now what I want is some scale. I want to make a little V. If this is the center of my canvas, I want to come up oh, a couple inches into just below the halfway point. And make a V and that's going to help me understand where my tree line is and my glow is going to come up here. You can see it's about here and here on the surface. Doesn't have to be perfectly even or symmetrical because uh, hills rarely do that. Then I'm going to want to have up here. I'm going to talk about a little moon. A little moon. Yeah, I'm going to put that right in the middle. Just a little half circle. I know coming down from that, we need to have a bat. Fluffy bat. And Fluffy Bat's wings. It's where the bat's at. Are going to be coming up like this, creating kind of like a little U, and then arcing off. Scam Likely is trying to call me again, John, but I say no. <gasps> Scam Likely likes me so much. They call all the time. Scam Likely is what my phone pulls up when it doesn't recognize a number. <laughs> now, I'm not going to keep all these lines, but knowing where he is, knowing where my moon is, making sure that these things are in scale, mm -hmm. it'll help me for later. All right? I'd be like, oh, it's going to come down. I just want to make sure that everything is, is fun and taking up the same sort of feeling that I originally had. So this is either you're transferring the traceable onto your surface. And if you don't know how to do that, don't panic. We got stuff about that. It's often included in mini books and uh, which are the step-by-step -step instructions you guys can download for free from the lessons from like, what is it? 2021 is when we started oh, doing yeah, it. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Hundreds of books now. This is another step free. here, isn't it? It's a step. We drew it in. All right. Ooh, Terry Russell asks a very good paint question. Uh, they want to know how I put out small amounts of paint and it lasts me the whole painting. So it's a combination of things. It is experience in paint management. It's also quality of paint. Now, if you're putting out large quantities of like Golden or Sennelier or Artist Loft Level 3 or Holbein or Matisse, where it's at the professional level, that's probably a paint management problem. If you're putting out paint and having going through it and you're using like Liquitex Basics, that's the nature of the paint. Nothing wrong with it. It just takes a little more for that paint to cover. Huh. So and you could use a little less water in that, right? And there are tricks that you can do to get around that. But that's just how that paint is. Nothing wrong though, right? Craft paint, same thing. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Okay, so we have this very misty, misty kind of down low area up into this gray. And I think... Oh, I'm going to get this big boy involved. This is a number 18 Artony hog bristle brush. But what I'm wanting is about, you know, just a little, it's about the size of a finger, right? Kind of thick brush that's round, that tapers in. The Simply Simmons company, this company here, makes an economical hog brush. Uh, it's, you know, this is a very high quality brush. This brush, the paint can crack and stuff like that. But for the price point, it is my favorite economic brush. So just depending on where you are in your budget and your journey, those are some options I can suggest to you. Huh. All Good right. Suggestion. Just something we can do. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and wipe it off on a paper towel. And I'm going to come here and grab a little of my white and a little yellow ochre. Right, just a little bit. 
and I'm going to make little kind of scumbly strokes at the base here. I might even work it in a little past my V if you guys know why. Do you guys know why? Um, that's because the trees are going to be uneven. I'm adding a little bit more yellow ochre as I come out. And as they come out unevenly, now some wiggling back and forth. I'm not making circles. I'm making little comma pushes. That's kind of a different thing. And the fact that my canvas is um, dry underneath and a color helps it look finished because even though when the paint is transparent, the gray kind of comes through and that helps with the atmosphere. I'm adding a little bit more white here at the base. And I might get a little more yellow on my brush coming up. It can be kind of hard to do. Let's see. Can we get into the brush and kind of look at how the stroke is being done? Yeah. All right. So you'll notice that it's not always the same direction, but they're like little C strokes, aren't they? Yeah. All right. My pressure isn't very hard, and you know that because the brush isn't all squished out. A little more yellow in there. On the toe. So I'm trying to have it lighter here and darker as it comes out here. And I just get a little more light coming down on the basin. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's call that a step, and we're not going to dry it, but I'll let you know what we do next. John's going to hurry us through the steps so, it's, so that it's kind of still wet. Okay. Uh, I forgot what color uh, blue is on the palette. This one is the ultramarine blue today. Because ultramarine blue and burnt sienna make a very nice gray, and ultramarine blue and Mars Mac make a Payne's gray as well. So it's a very useful color to have out. I will probably get out quinacridone magenta a little later um, to get into some purples, but we're going to wait till we're into the bat. We're stepped. Uh, we're stepped. All right. So as I'm coming up, I'm going to want to get into this gray that I made with my ultramarine blue, but I want it to be a little more blue, right, than uh, uh, burnt sienna. And I'm going to come up to my yellow ochre color and mix it in, and I'm going to start to blend these together. What I'm trying to avoid is too much water on my palette. Kind of creating that little halfway mark. Yeah. A little bit of yellow ochre in there. This is step one. And come back in and get a little bit of my yellow ochre on the brush with the gray. And look, I can kind of blend up. So what I have here is ultramarine blue, a little burnt sienna. I'm coming over, adding a yellow ochre into it and a little bit of white to create a half value. You know, where the colors are all integrated, that helps create that effect. Now, I got a couple good questions here. Mm, I'd love to answer them. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to go back up. I'm going to work uh, this up just a little Tara, bit. Tara, we'll get to your question right here at the break. Kelly uh, wanted to know, can you do this with your Princeton blending brush? Oh, yes, you can. It would be wonderful with a Princeton blending brush. Highly recommended it. Uh, and Melanie says, I love the look of painting on wood palettes. Do I have to do something differently on wood instead of canvas? Uh, the acrylic is really going to stick to your wood. Oh, painting on the wood? Yeah. Okay, yeah, a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to prep the wood because the wood is thirsty. So it can be good to gesso. If you really like the look of the wood and you feel like gesso might interfere with that, the trick there, I'm adding a little more yellow ochre to my brush here. The trick to that is to use clear gesso. Getting a little more white on here. Hmm. And see how I'm working this wet into wet and that's letting that be that kind of misty effect. Yeah. And yes, you could absolutely use the brush that they were asking, could you use, is the Princeton Blender. And I'll show this to you so you guys know. It's a wonderful brush. See, it does a nice job, too. Get a little bit in here. This is a brush I highly recommend if you think you're going to be painting for a minute to add to your brush bucket. It is not expensive. It's pretty economical. It's from the Princeton Select line. So 
If you have that, it would work just fine. I'm going to rinse out a little bit, and we're going to darken the sky as we go up. We need to give it some mood, right? Mm. So burnt sienna and ultramarine blue coming in pretty far to the bat, and I'm bringing this down on the toe of the brush. You'll see me wipe this out on the paper towel between um, my uh, canvas and palette, and that's just to control the water on the brush. Now I'm mixing burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and I'm adding a little bit of my yellow ochre in there. And it's greening the sky a bit. And I'm going to bring this down. Look how I'm on the toe. Look at that. Making little misty effects. This is kind of a trip if you've never done this before. And if it feels trippy, don't be hard on yourself about that. That is not a big deal. Now, as I come up, I'm going to move more into the ultramarine blue and Mars black. A little more into the blue coming down. We're just making sure that our our values are dark, right? Because it's yeah. the deep, dark night. And we want it to be a deep, dark night. I'm not making circles. I'm making commas, and they are light. And it lets me use the brush to blend things in. Ultramarine blue and black again. Look how nice and dark that is. I don't really need to keep my wings. I can put those back fairly easily. If you're concerned about keeping your traceable, you can just keep around those lines carefully. It's okay. Now, would you consider this on a scale of your one to three hoot two difficulty? Hoots. This is it two hoots? This is a two hoot. So uh, for for a beginner, this would be a this would be a like. A, a second level beginner painting. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, yellow ochre here and just kind of come back in to where it goes up into my trees. It's hard to say, like, you know, what what's too hoot for you? Yeah, it, is... that is person by person, too, because sometimes a technique will come to you really easily in one painting and then in another painting not be easy at all. Generally, if you've painted a couple of paintings, you could try a two out. Yeah. When here's what if you're if you're doing this program this year's uh, uh, thirteen days of Halloween, I have one who years of Halloween. I've done like hundred and twenty paintings or some insane number of Halloween paintings mm -hmm. that are one hoot. But also, I have a special program, the Beginner Acrylic Painting Course. Yes. It is a short course. It is uh, just you know a little bit of your life, but it'll take years off the learning curve, and it's free totally free you just go and do it and uh, we always have people going through so you'll always have people to talk to I'm adding a little bit of white as I come up and I kind of mood that out I want to mood it out sometimes we want to mood it out just kind of lightening it up there just on the toe of the brush ah uh, and uh, just, I'm not getting I, my gray to blend it in. I scrolled back up and just to, to comment there to Black Diamond, sometimes uh, we'll try to get to your question towards the end. Sometimes those um, studio questions can be super complex and hard to throw in in the middle. So we'll see what we can do there at the end. It's a question about studio safety and various paints and things and bioavailabilities and things. Oh, this is probably about, I think I saw this earlier about the chromium and the cadmiums. Mm -hmm. And I actually thought of my answer for you and I was going to uh, type it in <laughs> the questions, but you're saving me a very long answer. On that. Um, so the question. Is, go, yeah, read the question. Let me go back on that and read the question. So uh, da, 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 Didn't do da, it at the end, did I? I wouldn't no, mess with you. I'm you adding a little bit of dark curtain. value here. I'm just trying to make sure I've got a nice moody sky. Sometimes a moody sky takes a second. Don't let that stress you out. 
Black Diamond asks. Black Diamond is asking a spoke, very good question. Cinnamon spoke about the cadmiums and skin bioavailability. Yeah. Please ask about cobalt blue and chromium oxide green. So I don't have those memorized, but here's what I'm going to tell you right now. Um, if you go to the Golden Acrylic website, they will have the most health and safety information of any paint company on each of those pigments. Now, and even with the cadmium where they say it's coated, and that's just because I've talked to a bunch of people in the art world who make paint, and they've talked to me about that. Um, they try to make these paints as safe as possible for you. But lead pigment is still lead pigment. And um, on the tube of paint, whatever you have, it will have safety information. And I'll tell you a quick thing that I have learned. If it says Prop 65, what that means is do not, for any reason, eat or set fire to your paint. <laughs> Yeah, just just in general, pigments are not inert. They're they're not generally inert. Even even like craft paints can be hard on the skin. Anyone can have an allergy. Yeah, so you should always read the safety labels. Cons and and one of the things about the art but world. but back to the chromium and all oh, that, yeah. they've changed a lot of formulas. Like you can't get lead in acrylic, and sometimes you can't get the true pigment in acrylic paint. You can only get it in oil paint, and that's the part I don't know. I don't know if they're using a hue. Or the actual pigment so if they're using hue those health and safety issues won't uh, apply and they may only be available in oil paints or watercolor paints but what you do is you get a tube of paint I'm gonna get my cat out here right this is my cadmium paint and it doesn't say hue so I know it's real pigment on here it tells me what pigment it is and it confirms the light fastness um, it also gives me some health and safety information through here <clears throat> on here it would be safe use avoid ingestion excessive skin contact and irritation of spray mist and concentrated vapors so uh that's the golden acrylics have the best labeling and those are online you don't even have to buy the tube of paint to look that that also does mean that when you're sanding your your paint can't sand it wear a mask well yeah you've got to we had n95s going into the pandemic <laughs> um quite a lot of them actually because john does work on cars and and, and i sand uh, canvases and i have to mask up because you don't want those dust particles nope. in your lungs so if you sand a canvas you want to mask up we're not stepping here are we mm, yeah we're stepped okay we're gonna step here we're gonna step while here. we're stepping i want to uh can it, there, there was a good question a little bit back uh, i think tara was asking can she use these for painting party paintings if you use, if you get our license, our labs license, uh, that's on our website. You go to the labs website. It's super cheap because I get small business. Um, it's just a way for you to license from me officially. <laughs> yep. So I don't got to be an art cop. The artwork, obviously I don't have the rights to Disney, so I'm not extending those. If I do fan art, those are for enjoyment only. Um, but all my designs are available for license. It's like 1500 now. Yeah, and if you have any problem with any of the billing options on the website, just mm -hmm. email support at theartsherpa.com and we'll figure something out for you. Especially if you're a nonprofit, a school, a library, things like that. We accommodate all sorts of things there. So, ta da 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 da, -da. Okay, no more stepping. All right. We're all done. We're going to do a little moon. Okay. Now, I got asked about the dome, the Princeton blender, so I thought I'd use it here so you guys can see it. You could continue to use like a hog round or the dome. Either one is okay. You could use a synthetic. You just want a brush that's rounded. All righty. Let's get a little bit of our white and yellow ochre again. Can you self-round a brush? Mm, yeah, but it avoids the warranty if you care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a big deal to avoid a brush's warranty, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, but I'll, you might. I'll avoid a brush's warranty the minute I open the package. I will. Right, I will. Um, I became aware of that because back when I had a partnership uh, where I was uh, doing brushes, that was a very big concern to the manufacturers, like the voiding of warranties. And and it was highly... It, we we weren't we were never no, told okay. like I don't think we were ever told not to do anything. Oh no, we were. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> we were <laughs> absolutely told not to. <laughs> Getting a little more white on here, and you can see I'm just doing a similar stroke, aren't I? 
but giving a brush a haircut was among one of those. Yeah. Don't, so, you know. Don't do that. Don't reset your brushes. Don't, you know. I'm well, they, not... they didn't They didn't want us to do it. We don't mind. You t- it's like. No I don't care. Deal. No. But you can understand, like, a brush manufacturer is like, no, don't teach them how to give your brush a haircut when you first buy it and void the warranty. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> So you can reshape. That's how, okay, I'm going to tell you a secret about the brush world. Uh, they These guys don't really, for the most part, design their own brushes. Artists design brushes, and then brush companies copy those designs when they catch on in popularity. So most artists shape, cut, make a brush work for themselves for a tool. That artist gets popular. All the artists copy that tool, and then the brush makers go, hmm, <laughs> pointed uh, filbert seems like a good idea. And then it's super awesome to have a brush manufacturer come in and tell you as an artist what you need because they understand brushes <sighs> just for real all but right i'm taking paint. a little bit of my burnt sienna my ultramarine blue and my mars black and i'm coming while this paint is still a little wet and moist. i'm going to softly add that moon effect in hmm? it's moist moist isn't that nice yeah. Now this is going to be an interesting thing. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre together in a smidge of my cad red. As Tara was asking, you you designed this reference in image, huh? Yes. This year was the result of me moving and not even having any access to my studio. So uh, I'm going to tell you, I used SketchUp and I used uh, Piximulator and I used uh, um, Adobe Fresco. My mm-hmm. kids have informed me who do much more digital art than I am that Procreate is much better than SketchBook. And, yeah, so. and that I shouldn't recommend SketchBook. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what I know how to use, so I used it. Well, you didn't have time to pre-paint them this year. So well, you're... I didn't have access to a studio even. Right. So you're just sort of getting yeah. the we're digital We're taking reference. a little bit of white and we're adding uh, this little glow into this moon right here. See how we're doing? Yeah. All right. I'm going to get a little bit of my cad red and cad yellow onto my brush. Not that much rinsing. Mix it a little more to the red. Come over to that first thing and I'm going to blend that in. Um, so, and I definitely am not teaching digital courses, but I can recommend Bobby Chu thoroughly Mm -hmm. (laughs) for teaching digital art. That's a different skill to teach that because there's a lot of technical challenges. You make custom brushes and there's a whole bunch to do there. And, uh, we're just going to make this a little bit even. I know I've got a lot of fluffy bat coming on here, so I've just got to be ready for fluffy bat. Just making this nice here. And then I'm going to come along the edge of this little wonderful moon shape, right? Because we're trying to make it glowy. And I will just use a round. This is the hog round that I used yesterday. It's the number four artony. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit of my white and my cad yellow. But seriously, Bobby Chu and that C-H-U-I um, is fantastic if you're wanting to learn digital. The other good resource is Spit Paint on Facebook. It's a challenge group. They do a daily challenge, and there's a lot of talent and skill there, guys. Mm. Really amazing. I'm just kind of smearing this in, like getting that there. A little bit to my blue, black, and brown again. See how we're just creating kind of that little halo? Yeah. It's interesting uh, being digital and then going to acrylic. Oh, thank you, Anne Marie. I appreciate that so much. Oh, my goodness. Isn't this wild? So we've got mood here and mood there, all the moods everywhere. You guys ready? We're going to dry this thoroughly and then, and we'll then I'll come step. back and I'll show you the next step. All right. <laughs> so. Thank you guys for joining us on all this wonderful painting day. I love seeing all the peoples in the chat. 
all the little humans doing the human things, talking to the other humans, being cute little humans. You're such cute humans. I see you guys. And she's back. Oh, I got to step back. Up. There's the step. From outer space. So Brooke is uh, saying that this year's Halloween is the best that I've done. I have to agree. And she says the move has helped. I mean, I don't ever want to say that suffering as an artist is good for you. <laughs> but sometimes having something just crazy and earth shattering happen to you does get a lot of emotion out of you. I like it better when I just do it from relaxation and vacation. <laughs> But I do think like there was a lot to say and I put it into the work and and the design of this year and I was really excited. I'm excited to see how uh, Acrylic April comes out. Now I'm going to re-round my ball. Right? There's my ball. And I'm going to re-do some wings here like you do. I'm come up about, oh gosh, about an inch on a curve. Like so it's like little little horns or little commas. And a little egg shaped ball on this point. I'm gonna come over maybe a little bit below the edge. So it's kind of like a dip down and up. Can you see that? It's a dip down and up. Dip down and up. Dip down and up. And dip down and up, you're gonna have one little thing comes out like there, one little ribble comes out there. This one goes the opposite bend. So you see how this one bends up and uh -huh. this one bends up, this one bends over. It's a little to it. And now you know why sometimes it's nice to use chalk. We talked about that yesterday. The using of chalk, right? I'm going to bring this in. So I'm going to give an art high. Arc it up. Arc it up. Arc it up. Are we art arc, hugging? Arc, arc, arc. Yep. <gasps> Bulldog fine art. Thank you. And art high five to Pasha in the Ukraine. And yeah. Alice for saying high five. And to all of our Ukrainian friends painting <sighs> along with us. Art high fives for painting. Just art high fives on every level. To everyone in the Ukraine. Oh my gosh. You guys are. I just don't really have words. I don't. So, and I certainly wish I had power. So sorry for all of the not coolness. To oh, understate. Gosh, it's just you got you just just get them. <laughs> so, but you know, trying to maintain our art zen, the art because that's but what it, we're here. it matters yeah, that it here has many friends and artists, and I I know it's like hard to be creative, and I'm just I just think it's so amazing. And please share with us in group, and and we are thinking about you all the time. All the time. All the time. Thank you, Celtic Peasant. I appreciate that so much. And Wesley Merman says, hi from Victoria, uh, uh, British Columbia. I love the back hat and I really enjoy your tutorials. Thank you. Is our bat wings a step? Our bat wings are, let's, yeah, we're going to call this a step. It's good. That way you guys can put the traceable back in if you need it. You can, yeah, you, you can have a chance. If you if you can go from here and wing it on your own, fine. But if you need the little wing assistance, you got a wing man waiting for you. We're your wingman today. We're, we're your wingman today. All right, we're ready to go. Mm. All right. Now we're going to make the wings and the bat. I am going to actually use a different brush this time. I'm going to use a brush called a filbert, right? Let me give you examples of a filbert. I have two filberts here. I have one from the Simply Simmons line, and I have one from the Issa Bay Issa Krill line. Right? They're both for firm acrylic paint. This is a six. This is a four. Numbers aren't really relative to brushes. But if you were looking for these specific ones that I was showing here, then you would be able to find them exactly. I'm going to use the four. I'm going to get a little bit wet. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint in the basic part of my black, my bat black. This can be challenging because you have a dark background. We're going to need to do some stuff about that, my friends. Yeah. But there's an artist trick for that where you have a very dark background and then you have a dark object on it and you still need contrast. There's a thing that we do. 
All right, so we're going to take a little bit of our black and blue, but heavier on the blue, and a smidge of white. And we're going to come above the wing. See what I'm doing here? And softly blend in a little kind of glow. Yeah. Does that help you guys see that a little bit? Yeah, I think so. On top of that, you don't want to stripe. You're not trying to make a stripe. And then if I want to kind of soften the edges, I can kind of come in. And remember, you can always come back with your dark color into your wet paint in transition. See what I'm doing? So I'm not even doing the hog brush. The wings also will have a highlight on them. And so you're going to find that there is a lot of contrast control that you have. A little bit of this here. I kind of smidged in on my moon a bit. I smidged it. I like this filbert because it gives me clean edges. I like clean edges quite a lot. Yeah. Very, very, very much, in fact. The chalk comes off when the painting is dry with a damp brush. If you don't have chalk, is there anything else you can use? Mm, watercolor pencil. Watercolor pencil, yeah. Is a good option. Um, you can also sketch with paint. I don't, I sometimes demo that with beginners so they can see my lines, but it can be hard when you're new to sketch with paint because it creates a general sense of panic. Because <laughs> the, the lines feel permanent. They're not really permanent, but they feel permanent to your mind when you're new. When you've been painting a minute, you'll be like, eh, I can change my mind. Chalk is probably one of those useful investments. Yeah, and you can use chalkboard chalk. You don't have to use my fancy tailor's chalk at all. No. I'm going to kind of exaggerate some lines here. Isn't that fun? Now, the, there are Sherpa cat's tongues real similar to a filbert. Yeah, it's, it is a uh, pointed filbert. It's, so a it's pointed. very similar to a filbert. Now, when I have this basic shape in, I'm going to go ahead and take this brush. You could use a grainer or a round. Then I'm going to flick up a little bit of hair. See how we're doing? Yeah. And it's going to come to a point here. So these little brush strokes will kind of curve towards the left. And as I flick out, and that creates the brush kind of opening up and leaving little marks where all the filaments of the brush kind of create the hair, right? Yesterday, we used a hog brush. You could use that again if you felt that that was really a helpful way to get furs. I'm going to come down here. I'll make my little kind of uh, curled fur tail thing. This time I'm going to flick out this way towards the right hand side of the canvas. And then we're going to flick out towards the left hand side of the canvas, but we're keeping uh, the S stroke that we had there kind of intact, aren't we? Yeah. Fur can feel intimidating, but fur is actually pretty forgiving. <laughs> huh. Oh, that's interesting. It really is. I'm excited for the witch painting coming up, says Rhonda R. I first found you with the first witch painting I did with crap paint on a gessoed foam board because that's what I had. And then I did so many with you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Gesso on a foam board totally works. Gesso on a foam board totally works. Yeah. It was completely, a re you can gesso on cardboard. You know, uh, the only, only issue with that is just that it's maybe sometimes challenging to frame and not archival big whoop not a big deal is that you know um so if you're painting on non-traditional surfaces don't think a thing about it you're fine 
Nothing wrong with it. Nope. Just not archival. Which... You're going to be updating the store with more of these brushes soon? Yes. Uh, our store is going to have everything that you see on my show. Oh, so you buried the headline there for Anne-Marie. So we, the brushes that you see, we're going to be have we're going to have available on our website for sale soon, um, and we will try to update links below on where you can get them for right. in Amazon. But right, yeah, we have Amazon right now, but we're going to have a store. We're working on it. We're we're cobbling every together. Every day we're working on the it. The gnomes are cobbling. Oh, goodness gracious. That was a lot, wasn't it? But now we have a strange black shape mysteriously in there. Um, Lily Cleveland, can you spray Krylon gloss over matte spray? Um, actually, you're supposed to do the opposite if if you can't. So say you're wanting to do a matte finish on your uh, painting. Um, what you actually do is the first spray is gloss. This is step here? Yeah. The first spray is gloss. Maybe the second spray is gloss. When it's all cured and done, you finish it with matte. And that way there's no clouding. Um, and that's true for semi-gloss too. I got that directly from Golden and I have found that to be true in my own practice. Couples gloss gloss. If you have matte and you want to make it glossy, you can do that. There might be mild clouding. Can you mute me for a second? Hear me, Brad's like, sure, Ms. Door. We're working as fast as we can. We're just not talking about it because it's really hard. It's really hard. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's really hard. Okay, I think we're doing so good here, aren't we're we? We're stepped. We're stepped. Now we're going to start doing a little detail, and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Do you guys love that? I do. That's pretty exciting, right? Now I'm going to put out my quinacridone magenta because this is going to be quite involved in bat painting. Very involved. A lot of quin on him. And I'm going to come here and take a little bit of my magenta and maybe even my yellow ochre. And I'm going to make two little inner curves that will be the ear. And come up on the wing a bit with this. I can always come back with my moon color and trim it in. So if it like it's like, oh, I it was getting away from me, I can just come back with yellow ochre. Now, as I come out over the wing, I'm going to definitely pull some quinacridone magenta into that brown mix that I had from earlier and a little bit of white. And then I'll even have some yellow ochre here so I can kind of alternate between some of those values. Remember how I said there would be like a highlight? So just a fine stroke on the top of the wing. If you're having trouble getting a fine line, uh, change brush. As perfectly okay. It's not unheard of at all. Getting a little bit of white and yellow into that. A little more of the pink. Just highlighting a little bit inside, right? No, watch this. I can get my blue and look, it kind of goes purple. Add some white to it. And then we're going to imply our little veins back into the wing. And just a little bit back into the wing. I'm going to have my black over here where I can darken these colors a little bit, but still create variance. A 
and let's add a little bit of a magenta glow. I'm going to take a little magenta and a little of my yellow ochre. And just kind of glow up the wing here. Can you see how I'm doing that? Yeah. You could do this with a hog brush too. That would be okay. I'm going to have to get my ear painted back in there, but that's all right. I'll be doing that in just a second with my detail brush. I am brushing this in closer to the edge of the wing and I am curving those brush strokes. And when I want to kind of create a little glow, I'll add a little ochre, like a little bit. I use the edge of the brush when I'm using a filbert to blend. I'll grab a little bit of ochre, like uh, the cad, yeah, the quinacridone magenta and the yellow ochre there. Look how we're doing. We're just creating that glow in the wing, aren't we? Yeah, pretty Wonderful nice. glow color in the wing. See how it's on the curve there? If you're having any trouble with the blending, switch to your dome blender, switch to your hog brush, switch to the brush you blend easily with. Doesn't matter which one it is. You'll have preferences all artists do. If you're painting on paper not meant for acrylic, say watercolor or mixed media paper, a coat adjuster or white needs to go down first to prep the paper. Once dry, the paper does great, says Mary. It's very true. Mary gives very good advice. We have a bunch of people who've been with us like painting and part of the community forever and there's so much good advice in the chat. I highly recommend, even if you're on replay, keeping that live chat open. Now, would you mm. consider, consider this Sherpa style? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit in the primitive camp, but yeah, there's a bit of like, well, I mean, in that we are artists and we paint in our own kind of voice. What's your style? I don't know. I'll let our historians figure that out if anybody cares in a hundred years. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I would say it's a bit primitive and it's a bit outsider. Uh, there's a bit of pop culture that falls into it. I tend to be impressionistic, um, you know, uh, and I think that they're going to have to create kind of a new dialogue for everyone that, that came in after references were readily available, right? I think that there's some impact there for most of us about how how we're able to to deal with with this painting in general i'm gonna get my that was not that interesting of an answer I actually no it was really good I actually I, I, i'm gonna wait for i'll wait for you i'm to gonna paint get some. a number one monogram liner once you get to paint a little bit i'll comment on that one of the things i noticed is uh you paint you teach people how to paint for themselves right and not how to paint like you no i'm i mean like you can totally paint like me it's just but that, we're teaching you to be artists right so cinnamon will teach you about a subject like impressionism or pointillism or i don't know whatever ism that she's talking about because i don't really know a lot about them but then does it i'm gonna like... add a little cad yellow to my yellow ochre over here and a little mike when it while john is watching <laughs> well you but you get to learn about all the different kind of isms and then get to figure out which one you want to do and there's not a lot of pressure put on you to like have to do one or the other to get to them it's like the democratic yeah i would say democratized art is definitely something i'm highly invested in um, I believe the next great artist can absolutely come from non-traditional art circles. I believe that everybody should paint, right? Like that, you know, the justification for paint isn't that you're a great artist and must say something and speak to the world. What do you use? What color paint are you using there? Like? I am using quinacridone magenta, yellow ochre. I put it to brighten and added a little white. So it's quinacridone magenta, yellow ochre, tiny bit of cad, and some white. Okay. Carry on. No, no, that helps the mini books when I explain the colors better. Because I hear from them if I don't do that. Well, I know that you were talking and, and lining, and I wanted to make sure that we got, got sure they knew they were, what you were lining with. 
Now I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my quinacridone magenta, still on my number one monogram liner, and I'm going to again kind of come in and talk a little bit about these ears coming down. You can see I'm making a little triangle up. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get just right into my uh, blue and uh, gray mix over there. And I'm going to kind of line the inside of these ears so we can sort of see them a bit. Art high fives to Anne Marie. Art high fives to Anne Marie. She painted something and she's proud to have it hanging out in the middle of her living space. I love that. When I hear you guys talking about I painted something and I'm excited to have it here, that makes me so happy. You know, that was one of the biggest inspirations for me helping Cinnamon do this show was that when Cinnamon just started putting paintings that she painted on our walls after we had just sort of completely fallen down we were in a really we were in a you know subsidized housing rental it was barren walls and she started bringing paintings in and hanging them on the walls and it was like it just changed everything and so I think any, everybody, go ahead and tell them what you're doing. But I think everybody should paint. And I'm on. adding a highlight. So it is the quinacridone magenta, a little yellow ochre and uh, white here. And I'm going to, trying to highlight the tops of these ears so that they're kind of like showing here. So we can see them in, in the bat as you would. And then I'm going to come back with some black. And brush that in so the ears look integrated. putting those paintings on the walls sure changed everything. I felt it did help. It helped me even, you know, just having something to look at, adding a little more blue to that. I get a little blue into these ears here. You see, I'm just putting a little in there. Yeah. Let's get a little quinacridone magenta on there. Get some water into that, kind of lightens it up, brightens it up. Kind of like a mauve here, isn't it? Quinacridone, magenta, and ultramarine blue makes sort of a nice mauve. So that's a pretty good sort of ear. I'm going to look at you, sir, and see how you're doing. I'm going to add another little highlight, I think. Kind of kind of between the moon and the wings. And then let's take some of this pink highlight. And come on the inside of the little hair here a little bit. You know, see what I'm doing where I highlight that? Yeah. I think that's a nice little weird touch. I might get into my purple so that it blends a bit. And then into my black, just kind of blending it in. I just want a little highlight up the hair. I think that's super fun. Look, had yellow, quinacridone magenta. Little white. Cad yellow, quinacridone magenta, a little white. I'm going to add that a little bit to the highlight too. Okay, I think that was a lot to take in, guys. Is that a good so step point? Yeah, I think we're going to call this a step point because that was a lot to do. You guys did a lot right there. Right? Um... If you're having trouble with any of the techniques, definitely do the acrylic painting course. I've got videos that are just on blending. I'm going to start doing stuff like that's just on using a brush um, so that you can kind of start seeing that. Even if it's a one-minute painting, so you guys can really see how that's working. Uh, but every brush can do almost everything once you understand the brush, right? So it doesn't have to be a hog brush. It doesn't have to be a blender. It doesn't have to be mop, though. I do think... If you buy these two, you'll be super happy that you did a number one select Princeton oval mop and the number 12 round blender. They're very good for blending. A good hog brush is good to have around. These things help. These things are all very helpful. All right. Did we step? We have stepped. We have stepped. Let's let the bat kind of rest for a second. You know, think about what he's done. And I think I will, hmm, I might.
might I might stick with my filbert for a second that I just had if I can find where I put it right here now I'm going to take my Mars black and I'm going to load up my filbert and I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to it and then what a little yellow ochre I know so half of the mix is biased with a little yellow ochre and half of the mix is a little more burnt sienna and black right so the darker version is more burnt sienna more black little yellow ochre the lighter version is the burnt sienna mars black but with way more yellow ochre i'm gonna come here and i'm gonna start to upward stroke a little line of trees I don't want even lines and this was the, the lighter mix and we're gonna have to do this all the way up the V all the way up the V it's nice that you get to use it all the way up there I like it. You want to make these trees, you know, make your make your tree line interesting, you right? Can practice your trees all the way up the line. Practice your trees all the way up the line. I think. Oh, I got into my dark color. I need to be my light color. That is the burnt sienna and Mars black, but with way more yellow ochre. Right off this edge of the canvas here, just a little bit. Make sure you make that tree line uneven. Just flicking upwards on the edge. See how the brush just makes that very easily? Yes. One of the interesting things when you're designing digitally for painting in either uh, any medium, really. When you're going to go to a traditional medium from a digital medium is thinking about if those brushes can be done like because digital brushes are a little different than real brushes and you have to think can i do do i have a technique that will mimic this brush right that's the thing that you've got to think about because i've got a couple brushes that honestly i don't have a technique i would just have to go line and i would have to do crazy things All right so i can't really use those brushes even though i really like them very much in in the digital software All right. Um, uh, Adriana Grissel says that she loves the wings. They're loving the wings. Yeah. I am very much enjoying them as well. So we have a light line of trees now. It's really coming together, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now we're going to get the burnt sienna and the Mars black. I haven't rinsed out my brush. So there is a little yellow ochre in there. It's a hint of it. not everywhere okay just a couple places we're going to add this little brown black in trying not to make patterns i'm just trying to disperse hue in the ah. trees mm, i hate to say it can you mute me again yeah you're muted There, you can unmute me. Okay. Oh, pa uh, uh, Potator says, Hello, I'm sorry if I missed it, but did Cinnamon create the reference image? Yes, is my reference image. Do like it. <laughs> but it was done digitally. So, that is um, something you can really do. Uh, I don't care what your age is or what your background is with digital stuff. Right. I can say sketchbook. Though my kids swear to me is not as good as Procreate, um, is was really easy to learn and really useful. And Adobe Fresco uh, has all, I mean, it can really mimic watercolor. It can really mimic acrylic. It can really mimic pastel. 
So as a design, because you can do it so differently, it lets you really do some stuff that you might not do in your studio. So I do recommend it. Right. Yeah. I do recommend it. All right. I'm going to take a, a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my Mars black together. And now we're going to finish this out with that color. I'm going to try not to paint away all, and I can be more on the flat here with the dark color. Yeah. But as I come up to do the trees, I'm going to definitely want to lip over to the blue black. I don't want to paint out everything that I did. It's important not to. Because it creates that sense of depth in the, in the forest, doesn't it? Even on this moody dark painting, that creates depth. Uh, C. Blunton's like, I've never tried digital. It can be intimidating, right? It can be, but really, um, there's the resources like we have for traditional painting, and it does give you, uh, we have some people in the Archip official group that do my paintings only digitally. They don't ever paint them in traditional media. I still consider digital art art. still real art guys i uh, so in our group when you do a digital painting of one of the tutorials i still consider that that you did the tutorial with me and apparently my tutorials are followable in digital terms <laughs> as paintings to digital uh jason d says hello thanks for the beginner course i recently finished and i'm waiting on my certification with you moving, you're still offering a hand-signed version. Jason, um, let me, one, release the digital copy that you can print out. I've got to get onto my, I've been locked out of my Google for a minute, but I'm back into it just recently. So I'll release all the people who finish certifications and send in that question to support at theartsherpa.com. I feel like I signed some and left them with Donna, but I don't have that as a locked in memory. But I will be as soon as I'm settled and we can print them out and sign them. Does that make sense? Done? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll try to get that back going again. Because I really liked doing that. Because you guys worked hard on, on, the, on that course. Just painting this so it's a nice, solid, little deep, dark forest. Deep, dark forest. Coming around the edge because, you know, got a frame. Well, I'm not going to frame. I'm going to lean against a wall somewhere. But you might frame. All right. That's a step, guys. What do you think of that? I think that's pretty good. Um, Anne Marie Pratt says, tutorials are amazing. And Hope Healer says, hello, all. I'm late, but here. So I don't know if you know this, Hope, but a fun thing to do for and any of you guys, if ever you come in late, is to bring digital donuts where you throw up a donut emoji. <laughs> and we go nom, nom, nom. I know. It's silly. All right. Let's call a step. I'm going to dry it, though. Oh, okay. Because I don't it? want to drag my uh, hand through wet paint. Okay. It does. Yeah. Choo, choo, choo. So while she's drying that. Look over here. See what you little humans are doing in chat. Everyone. See everyone over here. Oh my gosh. It's so nice. There's lots of little humans and you guys are all hanging out and chatting and saying hello to everyone, each other. You know, I was over here working on the console. We have a whole bunch of new switcher stuff. I was telling them that I, I, I have a whole bunch of new switcher stuff that is keeping oh, yeah. me thoroughly distracted and on my toes today. On your toes today. We're going to do some glow around the bat. So there's a nice contrast, so he really shows. All right. You ready? Bat glow. Bat glow. All right, I'm going to take my cad yellow and my cad red, and I'm going to mix them together, and I'm going to make a distinctive orange. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some burnt sienna into it. I'm using my number four round hog bristle. So you just want a small hog brush or a brush that you can kind of scumble or um, uh, blend with. And I'm going to add just a smidge of white into it. 
and I'm going to just come lightly in. This is such a light touch, guys. I just don't have words for how light my touch is here. Back into the fur, which I'll be putting back in a minute. A little bit of a glow around the bat. One of the things when you're painting digitally, I promise you that I have, I have realized, is you'll make cool artist decisions that when you're like painting it later, you're like, oh, wait, that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but you just, just go for it because... Honestly, it makes a good painting. When I was in art school, I had an instructor that would have us do collages from fabric and makeup and found objects all glued to something. And then we had to paint that reference and make it look like what it was. Yeah. And that created some very different and interesting art, I feel. I'm going to bring some of that glow kind of down here. Sometimes I, I might get a little bit of that yellow ochre into it, maybe a little bit. Kind of dusting up. This is almost like little little energies coming up. See how it's just a loose sort of yeah. little dusting. We got this. It's the prettiest Halloween collection I've done, man. I'm so loving this one. So it's about keeping the brush light, keeping the paint load light, and keeping the space open, which means I'm not covering every inch of the canvas with paint. Ah. And that creates that mist effect back into what I already have. You know, sometimes it feels overwhelming. Like, how do we get a misty effect or a fog effect into our work? This is a good way of doing that. I just got some yellow ochre. I'm careful with the white because it's the most opaque. Uh, the other colors tend to be a little bit yellow. And so uh, I, anytime I get white involved, then I start to proceed a little more cautiously. Let's see how when we go back down in, it creates that glow kind of, it's just moody. Right. Um, Uh, Lily Cleveland, I'm also waiting for the move before I can expect the print that I won. Lily, if anybody doesn't have a print because the team's pretty great at mailing it out, it would mean that... Um, we may have been lost in shipping. Yeah. So and so contact us. We have spares. Never hesitate to write us and go, where is it? Yeah. We Ever. Have, we have... Ever. Ever. We have uh, ways support at theartsherpa.com. Tell them what you won, when you won it what it was, um, that it, it has been definitely time and shipping and sometimes things don't make it and you guys always need to let us know because if you won something, I want you to get your prize. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So you shouldn't have to wait. I don't know, but the team, like Donna will be able to like know that. So right there, please. Always, always for that kind of stuff. You can always ask in the live. I don't mind. I'm not like, yeah, no, but, not at all. but write us, never hesitate to write us if there's anything like that going on. I am happy, happy to help. This we're is all not a happy step to help. Yet. We're still going. No, no. New step. New step? New step. Because we're going to do eyes. Okay. See me get my glasses on? I did see you get some glasses some on. Some glasses got on there. So I'm like, ooh. I think I can see in them pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to rinse my brush. This is my number one Princeton liner. And I'm taking a little bit of my yellow and I just put a little white into it so I can see it so it's got coverage. And I'm going to come down from the eyes a little bit. I'll make a little line. Oh gosh, it's like just a little dash there. It's got a bit of a curve to it. And a little bit of a line. With some good distance between it. Ah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to come down. I want these to be pretty round. So I'm going to round it out. It's going to look a little, a little grumpy. I'm just better at grumpy eyes is what it is. 
I'm not this grumpy, I swear. But I do seem to paint some disgruntled eyes. Just getting my eye shape in there. Now sometimes I need to get a little moisture on my brush and that's okay. <laughs> Looking pretty good. It is not bad. I'm going to go ahead and get some bright orange here. Uh, my cad red and my cad yellow. I'm going to come just from the outside edge and come in. And then we're going to just come from the outside edge a little bit, the bright orange, right? Yep. Just come in. We're going to be working pupils and everything in there, but you've just got to get some color on. If you're having a terrible time with coverage, you may need to paint your eyes white first, allow it to dry, and then get the colors on. Okay, now we're going to come back to furry fur because we just kind of did some stuff with the fur, right? Yep. And I'm going to use my number four Isabay Acryl Filbert again and just reinforce fur. Maybe a little wider out on the belly now that I've got my glow in. See how that does? Yeah. Can come up and make sure that above the eyes are loading up. Sometimes I'll do uh, something on a painting while I'm letting another part of a painting kind of dry. Oh, you can work around and not have to stop. No, work around and not have to stop. Now I'm going to come up over the ears and kind of put some fear, fur in the ears as I do this. And it also sort of fattens him, I think. I think he's fattening. Let me tip him to make sure I'm getting a good, fat little fella. Yeah, I think he's pretty well fed. We'll try not to think about what he's been eating. Huh. <laughs> oh, so good. I don't know why I make myself so happy with this stuff. I think it looks great. And I get a little uh, white and yellow. And I'm going to come up here and sort of highlight along the top of the little ear again, just to make sure that we can see those, you know, against that black background. That's important. Yep. I'm going to get a little black on my brush. I'm going to come in and make a nice little pupil. Sometimes I have to thin the paint with water. If I find that on my brush the paint isn't painting well, that just generally means it may be uh, starting to dry or I need to thin it with water. And come in and also here. Now. Yeah. I'm going to come back and kind of cover over the little yellow that I had now that I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need the yellow. The top. And get a little bit of my brown on here. Right into the wet. So it's the burnt sienna right into the wet. And let's get a little bit of our magenta on our brush. I'm going to come underneath. A little bit of the magenta onto the brush. We're going to come in underneath. And let's get a little bit of that pink that we had that was the yellow, ochre, magenta, and white. Remember that? Not, we don't want it to be white, but we just want it to be noticeably as a, as kind of a lid. Getting that, getting them glowies, right? Getting them glowies. 
and get a little bit of my yellow. This part sometimes, man, it's like a, taking a Polaroid, old tiny Polaroid, where you almost hold your breath. Uh huh. And a little bit of that pink and kind of paper that a bit. Right. Back into our orange. We're starting to get that glow in there, aren't we? Yeah. Little white, little yellow. Tap in a little bit of that inner glow. Oh, he's getting all glowy. Look at his little eyes going. Aren't they lovely? They are. Looking good. Okay. Now I'm going to come on in here and kind of on the inside corner of his eye, add a little bit of a reflection. Right there. Maybe a little bit there as well. Right here. Right there. Those are so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Do you love this? I love him. Uh, Linda Hall says, since I moved in with my son, I finally feel settled. Uh, I didn't have an area to paint set up, so my palette, which I cleaned before I put it away, and I find my sponge is moldy. So one more step to go now. I often, I really do the thing with the that they recommend with the bleach, and every once in a while, I do make sure that um, my whole palette is taken down, and we do like a little chlorinated bath on right. everything. Not solid bleach, but like a chlorinated bath, which kills the mold out, and then I rinse everything out. And they recommend like a couple drops of bleach and the water. I don't really do that because I'm not sure how it'll affect the paint, but I think in some areas of the world, it may be necessary, like super duper necessary. We got a step here? Yes. I'm going to get my towel. We have just little bits left. Just a little bit left. Just a little bits left. Just the tiniest bit. Mm. It's a fussy bit, but it's just the tiniest bit. <laughs> So we're going to do our focal ones first, and then we'll do our kind of out of focus ones first and uh, next. And I, I feel like I like this. I do want to do some lining. I'm going to put out a thing called uh, Golden Fluid Acrylic in the color Titanium White. And put a drop of it out there because I just want some flow, some glow and some flow. And I'm going right. to go ahead and get a little of that on my brush with some yellow. And I'm going to come into the wing areas. I'm going to just make sure that I've got this little highlight. See how that's super impactful? Yes. Didn't want to miss it. Look at this go. We're just doing the details, aren't we? Yeah. And it does make our wings feel very glowy. I think. Notice that I lift and put my brush down to create kind of a reflective line. Because light never really hits everything that solid. I love it. I am not minding this at all. No, not at all. It turned out really cool. Just a little bit of a touch. Now, we have these little bats. Little they bats. are mostly uh, yellow ochre and white. So those are the colors I'm going to mostly work. The miscellaneous bats. The mis I might get some burnt sienna into the mix too because they're just, they got the, yeah, they're miscellaneous bats. Let's come here. 
and we're going to make our big focal one. He's going to be a little V, kind of like those birds. Remember the birds we all used to do in school? And I'm going to make a small little V. Another little V. implied V. A little more brown over on this side. So I'm gonna make him this this a little more defined. Right, those wings are a little more up more V. Because this this helps us feel like you know we're really seeing seeing the uh, the distant little baddie bats. Okay. Down and then down. So it's just an implied bat, right? Right. I'm going to exaggerate this wing because I want it to be super sharp. And come here and kind of paint this in. I could use a maybe bigger brush, but I want some control. So I think I'm going to just stay with my number one liner. Yeah. And if any of it gets away from you, you just paint out what you don't like from the black background. That makes sense. It's the background color and trim it or change it. Like I'm going to fix this far wing here. As soon as I get him in the way I want him. I'm adding a little bit of white down to the inside here. And to imply like some shape and value. So if I'm happy with that, but I don't like a line, then I'm gonna come back in with my black and blue. See how that's sharpened that out? So if any of these lines you don't like or you don't love or it's not perfect, guess what? It's your painting. You can fix it. Yep. You're allowed. These are just little implications anyways. I'm going to get a little more burnt sienna here because he's a little bit further back. Maybe a little more yellow ochre and white. Just hinting these in. They're hinted in the trees. Maybe a little more solid ochre on the brush. It's getting pure ochre right now. There we go. Just a little bit hinted there. It's just, he's just sort of in the distance, right? Yeah. And always get a little white. See how that just pulls him out? It really does. Yeah. So I'm going to go a little more brown over here. A little more burnt sienna, just so it's a little more muted. You can always come back with a little yellow ochre in it. And it then becomes that white highlight. Does that make sense? It does. Kind of uh, tap in a little bit of a... These are sort of ghosty implied ones. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Why do I keep asking if it makes sense? I'm the teacher. I should be, like, making sense. <laughs> you're just wanting confirmation that what you're saying... Is coming out the way you intend it to. I think I am. When I do these little tap bats where I just kind of cover the V shape, right? What we're really doing is just making sure.
that big, I'm going to grab some yellow ochre and highlight the inside, that big and small, right, are demonstrated in the distant hills. Maybe a little more yellow here. Just some. And then more detailed sometimes. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow, maybe my cad red, I'm kind of get them together in a little yellow ochre. And I'm going to touch a couple places here and there, not too many, just some. Can I see where I've done that? Uh huh. I'm going to rinse out and I'm going to get just the smallest amount of white. Ooh, little dots. Kind of like little magic sparkles. Sometimes I'll add them without the yellow, but I like a little bit of the yellow. All right. So there, oh my goodness, is that not so kind nice. of a thing? Oh, yeah. he's so pretty. Guys, we did it. Turned out so good. We did it. We did it. We painted the cute ass out of painting. What are we going to sign? We're going to sign, sign with a little bit of our quinacridone magenta and our yellow ochre and a smidge of our white. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. I just so appreciate you guys. I love everyone who showed up for the bat. I had a couple paintings that were my favorites of the collection, and he's actually one of them, mm -hmm. weirdly for me. Um, and very often, my favorite painting from the collection, not y'all's favorite painting at all. In fact, I was so excited when I did the one-eyed monster, like I lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was the best thing ever. And I was like, they're going to love him so much. Everyone's like, I mean, I love him, and he's cute, but like the witches. And I was like, oh, yeah, the witches were good. Uh-huh. But it's weird because stuff will resonate with us even, and that's something for you guys to realize even as a creator. Yeah. Um, that sometimes your favorite painting will not be everybody else's favorite painting, but that doesn't make it any less wonderful for either of you. Right. Right. It's, it's just the weird thing about art is that we get something out of creating it, but other people get something out of viewing it. And, you know, neither one negates the other. There we go. And a little signature. I did yo ochre originally, but I kind of like this a bit. I don't know. We'll have to see. Sometimes I feel like I gotta. I try to get it where it's not too fake. <laughs> and another 10 minutes in the signature. Oh my goodness. That is not working. Give me a second. All right. I didn't like it. <laughs> Have you ever signed your painting and not liked it? <laughs> well, now you learn what I do. Do do do. <laughs> and this and is the gone. unexpected I didn't bonus like it. lesson. <laughs> bonus lesson. All right, I'm gonna try this. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna resign. This is the bonus secret bonus. So yeah, you should dry it off, dry it thoroughly. That way, when you do the next thing, it will. Just telling them they have to thoroughly dry it so that it will. Like yeah, so it won't. Now I'm going to make sure I rinse out my brush. Get I wipe my brush with a paper a paper towel or towel to make sure there's not a hidden drop of water. And I think this time I'm just going to come over to my fluid white and use my uh, yellow ochre that I have here. Kind of what my original instinct was. And I'm twirling the brush, loading it on the tip, and trying again. Oh, much better. Look at that. Nailed it on the second try. <laughs> Happens.
Yep. Sometimes you don't like some part of your painting. Guess what? Just paint it out. Doesn't matter. It's totally okay. No one, no one is going to think you did anything wrong. Now, I personally love this. This is maybe one of my favorite paintings. This is certainly my favorite bat poof since Bat Cat in the Cup. Yep. That I've done. I just adore him so much. I love him forever and ever and ever. The mini books are coming out a little bit. It's taking a little bit longer to get them out, but we are hustling on them as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If you are at the one hoot level, but you're trying to level up into a two hoot, that mini book, those written out instructions with the step-by-step -step pictures and the descriptions of the color mixes and the information on the brushes and those just the tips and encouragement, sometimes that's that's the thing that helps you like break that plateau right which is why we all work so darn hard to put them up because they are not easy to put out and right now they're free for download some days i'm gonna bind them all together in books and then we will also sell them um but they'll probably remain free for download yeah so that way, no matter where you are in your budget and the world changes and gets crazy, you can afford anything that we're doing. Uh, everyone is saying thank you, and I so appreciate you guys for coming. Remember, it's important to learn like an artist. So what do we do when we're learning like an artist? We listen to ourselves. We hear that inner voice. We pay attention that not it's not negative self-talk, and we say kind things to ourselves and trust our instincts. We're smart. We have empathy. you got to empathize for yourself. If you have something going on in your life, that's making it hard for you to paint. You've got loss. You've had an injury. Something's happening. Have compassion for yourself. You would have compassion for your friend. Not every time we sit at the canvas do we have the same experience. Except where you're at. If you're really new at painting and you haven't worked out clouds yet and you're having a frustrating time with the blend, that's okay. Just know that that's not going to be forever. Yeah. It's where you are today and today is okay. We're going to be present in our painting which means we're not going to live in the past paintings that we've had, those worries, anxieties, or expectations, and we're not going to live in future paintings that we're going to do, worries, anxieties, and expectations. We're going to be here today. And the most important part, which is the double P, you got to come up and paint. You just got to do it. Yeah. All right. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.